if you were arrested for domestic violence, but the alleged victim is lying. It wasn't a misunderstanding. The alleged victim is just straight up lying. The, the scary reality is that you could be convicted potentially just based on that person's word, literally just the word with no physical evidence. If they get up on the stand and the jury believes what they say, you could be convicted. But that doesn't mean that you have to be. And in this video, I'm going to be explaining how to fight those lies. My name is Veronica. I'm a domestic violence defense attorney here in California. And I help people put their cases behind them so that they can enjoy their lives and their freedom. I also teach a course called Defeat the DVRO in which I teach you how to represent yourself at your restraining order hearing and win. If that is something that you are interested in, you can get your free first class in the course via the link in the description box down below. Okay, so let's jump right in. How do you defeat Defeat lies in a domestic violence case where you can't necessarily disprove, at least not with hard evidence, that the alleged victim is lying. You don't necessarily have video of what occurred. Usually there's not even going to be an independent witness who can say for sure what happened or what didn't. And so how are you supposed to defeat those lies? If you can't 100% or close to 100% disprove what they're saying, what you can very likely do is prove evidence of other lies. It is a rare liar who doesn't leave a trail. You just have to find the trail. And I'm going to be going through some examples of what that trail might look like because it is very case specific. Before I do that though, I want to warn you that if you were going to point out that there's some lie in what the alleged victim said, that could be a trial, that could be in body worn video when the police came out. It could be in the context of a restraining order what they write down in their papers. You need to make sure that whatever it is, is clearly a lie, not a mistake. Because most of the time, the number one excuse for a lie is going to be, oh, I forgot, oh, I must have been mistaken, it was an accident. Nobody ever admits that, oh yeah, that, that was a small lie. They don't do it in these situations. You need to make sure that you're focusing on something specific and something that really could not have been a mistake. An example might be they got the date slightly wrong, but there's nothing particularly significant about either date. Okay, in that case, that doesn't mean that the whole thing is going to be dropped or that they are lying. It means that they probably just were mistaken, right? They can easily just say that they were mistaken, unless there's some reason why that date is important or why someone couldn't have just been mistaken about that. Okay. So let's get into the examples. We'll go through five of them. Number one, the victim says that the two of you had an argument, really bad argument, and it turned physical. Now she says that during this argument, at one point, you go outside and you slam the front door so hard, significantly damaging the frame, causing splinters to it. But it's not true. You didn't damage the frame. Maybe you did slam the door a little bit, but the frame was damaged before any of that happened. Now, why is that important? It is important because if the alleged victim is describing this argument in which you are so enraged, she's giving a bunch of details about how this argument occurred. And she's saying that as evidence of this, look at the door. It's all messed up. It's all splintered. It's broken. Look how violent he is. And you have the police that are taking photos of it, adding that to the evidence. If you can prove that you did not, maybe you slammed the door, but you did not break the door, it had already been messed up, and she said that you were the one who broke it, then that calls all of her testimony into question. Now we can't just take her at her word for something. So if, for example, you had a photo of a Grubhub delivery that you got sent to her place where the door is already messed up, prior to this incident, then you couldn't have been the one to cause it. Yeah, maybe it got a little bit more splintered during that incident, it doesn't matter. If she told the cops that you caused that damage, but most of the damage was already there and she didn't mention anything about that. She didn't say, yeah, it was already messed up, but he made it a little bit worse. If she didn't say that, we can't believe a word that she said. Example two. The victim claims that you caused scratches to her legs. You don't know how she got the scratches. Maybe you never even saw any scratches on her, but she has a dog who has long nails, who doesn't like them trimmed, who routinely will jump up and scratch her legs and anybody's legs that they can. If you can show that you've had scratches on your legs like that before, maybe you have a photo of yourself with scratches on your legs, or that she has. If you have a photo of the two of you together, zoom in, look at her legs. If she's claiming those scratches to her legs and she says that they were caused by you, but her dog has made the same or similar injuries, then I'm not going to care about what else she says happened because now I don't believe a word that comes out of her mouth. And that is the goal. This is from a real case that I took to jury trial. The victim claims that you choked her because you were so angry that she broke up with you. 
you have text messages showing that you broke up with her. You were only meeting up with her to get your stuff. I had to lock her in and have her say that it was really important and she was sure that she had broken up with him. He had not broken up with her. I had to get her to say that, to commit to it, to not say we went back and forth and we both broke up with each other. I don't really remember. I can't leave her that wiggle room. So we had to take it to trial where she got up there on the stand and she said, absolutely not. What are you talking about? I broke up with him. He didn't break up with me. And he was so angered by it that he went and he choked me. I guess she forgot about the text messages. She had a lot of other allegations against my client, but when you don't believe her about my client's motive to attack her in the first place, you can't believe her about anything else, can you? Number four, and this one comes up in DVRO hearings all the time, as well as criminal cases, the victim claims that you are stalking her, that you were just texting her relentlessly. Maybe you texted her 50 times in a three-day period. That sounds bad until you realize that she was texting back or she initiated texting sometimes or initiated texting after that. Or maybe there's some other time period where you were texting less, but she texted you 50 times in a similar time span. It almost makes you want to roll your eyes. And that is pretty much the reaction I got from a judge recently in a DVRO hearing. Well, what are you complaining about? Why are we here? Why are you wasting all of our time? The two of you are texting one another. Number five, the victim says that in a fit of rage, you shoved her. You just shoved her really hard and she fell down and she hit her head and now she is gravely injured. If she accuses you of that, you'll probably be charged with a felony. But listen to that story. In the story, she's saying that you just pushed her once. There wasn't a fight back and forth. If you can prove that you had injuries that day, if you had scratches to your face, if you had marks on your arm, if we can show that you were injured that day too, then her story is unlikely to be true. Either she has to give some explanation as to why you had the injuries, so the tables are turned a little bit, or she has to amend her story to, oh, in self-defense, I scratched him and I grabbed him or whatever explanation she's going to give. But if she's locked into her story first, if she gave a really detailed story to police or if she's on the stand and she gives a really detailed story of what happened and it does not include anything about her attacking you or better yet, if your attorney can get her to say that she never attacked you and then we are able to show photos of these injuries, if you are successful with that, then it leaves you to wonder, how did you get injured then? Her story can't really be true. It seems like maybe there was some sort of altercation between you, which could leave you guilty as the defendant, right? You can't use excessive force in defending yourself. But if she left out part of that story, it really just calls her entire story into question, and that is how you get a not guilty verdict. I hope you found this video helpful. If you do have a domestic violence case in California, if you did get arrested, feel free to give me a call. You can find my number down below. You can also book a consultation there. And if you did find this video helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the bell, and follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook.